success through this drive. We'll tell you how the community is preparing for the annual I'm just going to follow the, the tradition, which is, you know, to get drunk and have as much fun as possible, that's all. Also, Black and Latino Children's Studios gathered Saturdays to discuss common issues with Facebook. Your U.S. 7 break starts right now. From the Richmond Journalism Teaching Studio at the University of Illinois campus, this is your UI7 News Break. Hello, I'm Matthew Eglin. And I'm Lauren Mraz. Diane Marlin upset incumbent Laurel Prussing for the Urbana mayor seat in last night's primaries. Diane Marlin is an eight year Urbana City Councilwoman who campaigned on the promise of improving economic development. Marlin took the Democratic mayoral nomination by a landslide. The next date Marlin has to look forward to is April 4th the date of the general election. There she will face off against Republican Rex Bradfield. The U of I's Willard Airport south of Champaign will give flyers some new options starting in June. United Airlines will begin offering flights to 27 one-stop destinations. The new service will include three daily flights out of Willard Airport with a combined 150 daily seats. Tickets have already gone on sale for United Express flights in and out of the university's airport. Airport Executive Director Gene Cossey says the increased traffic is sure to open up new business opportunities. Well, it's going to put more people through the terminal and more people through the airport. So um, all of our businesses will improve. American Airlines will get more business. United, of course, is coming in to get business. Our parking business, our concessions business, everything will improve and increase. The university is still looking at possibly adding other airlines, specifically one on the East Coast. Unofficial St. Patrick's Day is coming up once again at the University of Illinois. The event celebrates the Irish holiday two weeks early and is notorious for underage drinking and high police activity. UI7's Jillian Kaler has more on how everyone across campus is preparing for Friday's events. Unofficial is right around the corner and that means green, green, and more green. For locally owned clothing store t-shirt, unofficial merchandise brings in some serious sales. This is a really big deal for us, especially in the spring, because um, a lot of the other times of the year, um, it's just mostly line eye stuff, but this time of year, it's all green that's come up to the register. As much as the clothing matters, some students are solely focused on the day's main event, drinking. I'm just going to follow the, the tradition, which is, you know, to get drunk and have as much fun as possible, that's all. In order to stay vigilant with student safety, the bars across campus are working closely with the Champaign and University Police. The one thing they really do want us to enforce is the one drink per person, so there's no like binge drinking, people are just like icing out all their drinks on the floor. According to University Police spokesman Pat Wade, officers are getting ready to increase their patrols across campus. You'll notice that higher p police presence, um, they will be interacting with people, especially people who are, who are not engaging in legal behavior. Um, but again, they're just there to help people. So if you see one of these cars driving around, don't be afraid. The police are here to help. Wade wants to also remind students of the university's medical amnesty policy, which protects underage intoxicated students in the event of an emergency. If you're drinking underage and you call 911 to help yourself or someone else, you won't get an underage drinking ticket. Our first priority in that situation is getting help to the person who needs it. So as the countdown begins for one of the biggest drinking events on campus, students are encouraged to stay alert and proactive. Unofficial officially kicks off on the morning of Friday, March 3rd. In Champaign, I'm Jillian Kaler, UI7 Newsbreak. For all the bug lovers out there, young and old, the Insect Fear Film Festival is to the place to be. In the Follinger Auditorium, people from all over the Champaign-Urbana area gathered for a night of fright and creepy crawlers. For the past 34 years, the Entomology Graduate Student Association has put on the Insect Fear Film Festival celebrating all things bug. Over the years, the festival has expanded to an event for the whole family. Kids and adults alike had the opportunity to hold their favorite creepy crawlers, get them painted on their faces, and even taste them in snack form. The festivities included two movie screenings, raffles, and art contests for children in the area, as well as trivia. The festival attracts hundreds of guests of all ages every year. After severe weather warnings, a tornado touched down in Ottawa Tuesday evening. Officials say one person has been killed because of the twister. Officials have not released many details about the reported death, but Mayor Jim Rick did speak, about, did speak to the media about what he witnessed before and after the tornado hit. And when the tornado hit, 
Uh, we come inside the fire station here, and it's probably 30 seconds, and went outside. It was a different story. Tell me, explain Just, to what you we've seen stuff flying through the air, uh, uh, signs, um, parts of roofs, and tree limbs. There was also damage at a LaSalle County nursing home, but no serious injuries were reported. Hack Illinois, a student-run hackathon, was hosted by U of I this weekend. UI7 Newsbreak's Riga Lee reports on why coding is getting more and more people's attention. Hack Illinois was this past weekend. It's a two-day coding event where the participants create a unique program. Nathan Moose is a junior from the University of Michigan. This is his second time participating in the event. It's empowering. It gives you, um, it gives you a complete mastery over the machine. And um, if you know how to program, you don't need to fear automation because you're in charge. I'm right here at the opening ceremony of the Hack Illinois 2017. As you can see, there are so many people attending the opening ceremony tonight. However, according to the director of the Hack Illinois, Arnav Mishra, he said Hack Illinois decided to cut down the participants of this year to 1,000. Mishra says the purpose of controlling the number of participants is to maintain the quality of the event and to bring a better experience to students. Mishra also emphasizes the necessity of studying coding. It's important for people to learn these white collar jobs of learning how to code where you can really be able to build something new because there is untapped potential of, of brilliant minds across the world. Moose agrees with Mishra about the importance of learning code in a broader scale. With everyone uh, knowing how to code, you gain the benefit of you gain the benefit of more people able to take advantage of automation. As coding becomes a more prevalent component of our lives, the hackathons become a new trend in the U.S. for students to show off their talents and to improve their coding skill. In Urbana, I'm Ruga Lee, UI7 Newsbreak. After turbulent storms last night, we're moving into milder weather for this weekend. The high tomorrow is 44 with a chance of a passing shower. In the afternoon, the low is 22. It will be partly cloudy sat Friday, slightly colder with a high of 39 and a low of 23. Moving into the weekend, it will be sunny and warmer with a high of 56 and a low of 41. Perfect for any weekend plans you may have. When we come back, we'll give you a recap of Saturday's Black and Latino Male Summit. Plus, the Illinois men's basketball team is preparing for its final home game of the season. Pretty much a good day for me would be people leaving their hands off of me. I'm always called names. Um, everywhere that I go, there's always someone um, calling me names, calling me gay. I've been choked, thrown up against the wall, punched. Nobody's ever tried to help me. You've messed up your son's haircut. Mom? Do you A, try to fix it? Like it never happened. B, work with what you got. Or C, show solidarity. As a parent, there are no perfect answers. But you don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. So, I'm kind of new here, but I've noticed a trend. My human does this funny thing where she goes around and gets all my toys, and then she hides them in that basket by the door. You know, but it's always the same basket, and it's always in the, in the same place. And then she acts so surprised when I find them, but, you know, she's putting them in the same basket. Again. It's like, hello? That's where you put it last time. You were the worst at hide and go seek. Black and Latino men are coming together as they devote a day to find solutions to problems they face every day. Here's more on how the two groups plan to overcome the issues. Every trend that they offer, I'm so pleased and so proud that you all are here. Different Black and Latino campus leaders presented on common racial, cultural, and economic issues at the Black and Latino Male Summit this past Saturday. This was music performance seniors, Carlos Leon's first time at the summit. In the music world, um, it's very Eurocentric, white, um, and I happen to be like one of the very, very few uh, 
people of color, um, and I've never had the opportunity to explore like the space of people of color into my last couple of years here. Um, and knowing this would have been like really great because like I feel very comfortable. Attendees visit different workshops throughout the day. These workshops center around issues both Black and Latino communities face. First black neurologist. Oh, I'm going to say 1970. Okay. Leon, like many other black and Latino men, battled the white hegemonic message that extends throughout the country. He suffered from depression during his early years at U of I. But La Casa Cultural Latina and the African American Culture Center works to provide this event as a massive resource for marginalized students. I think it's important to make sure that we uh, provide the type of programming that will allow black and Latino students to successfully graduate from U of I. Leon is feeling empowered after the summit. He has a new attitude as he gets closer to graduation. I'd like to say, I'm brown, I'm queer, I'm here, I'm proud, <laughs> get over it. Leon urges everyone to see others' perspectives and attend events like the summit to become a better ally to all communities. In Champaign, I'm Matthew Eglin, US 7 News Break. <laughs> Illinois students honor black women's resilience after facing obstacles due to sex and skin color. On Saturday, campus organization Empower Me hosted their annual Black Women Rock Award show. The ceremony was a night filled with class to commemorate a woman's ability to uphold black girl magic. The categories included Rising Star, Humanitarian of the Year, and Black Women Trailblazer. A few recipients teared up after receiving appreciation from peers for their hard work. Guest speaker Lena Lewis reminded her female listeners to recognize their potential, embrace their inner beauty, and share the love in order to be the best they can be. The event closed with family and friends congratulating their loved ones on a job well done. Champaign-Urbana has a hidden gem within their community. UI7 Newsbreak's Jane Lee shares the discovery of an up-and-rising music sensation in this edition of See You Neighbor. Sam Flan is a 21-year-old music producer, singer, and rapper. Coming from the nearby town of Monticello, he started producing music at 15 years old. I got really into it in high school and um, yeah, started just working on stuff when I should have been doing homework or whatever and then I uh, ran into a couple people I was a pretty big fan of by chance like Vic Mensa and some other people who kind of gave me the confidence to start taking it seriously. Bland's first full album, Enter Wild, was released two years ago. He describes it as an action-adventure rap album. Enter Wild lets listeners hear growls and other monstrous sounds right here from Allerton Park. Done in the setting of the forest Allerton Park where I grew up and I got a lot of inspiration so I kind of turned that into like a magical fantasy. Flan says places like Allerton Park sparked his imagination into audio storytelling. The album took three years to completely produce. For the last two years I've made a piece of music for someone else every day. Like one but um, in terms of actual collaborations, I, not too many. I'm kind of like stockpiling. But he says he often collaborates with U of I musicians. Madeline Whitesell, a recent U of I graduate, has been featured in Flan's music. I really like the production that he does. Um, I think that it has really... It kind of reminds me of an orchestra almost sometimes. Like he is you know, using all these different sounds that I wouldn't think to use necessarily. You can listen to Flan's music through SoundCloud and Bandcamp. In Champaign, Jane Lee, UI7 Newsbreak. For more of our stories, please follow us on Facebook. And see more of our stories on our YouTube page. That is all we have for this edition of UI7 Newsbreak. Thanks for watching and have a great day.